Hi everyone, today we're going to explore an old ford, an old river crossing point. Now this part of the river is actually very wide. As a result, the water is quite shallow and it makes an ideal crossing point on the river. Now for hundreds of years there's been a farm on that side of the river and a farm on that side of the river. Now back in the days, all these farms are interconnected by tracks. You could either walk between the farms or you could ride a horse. And old maps show that this was a crossing point on the river as early as the early 1700s. Maps earlier than that don't show roads, they only show farms. So it's good to assume that if there were farms on each side of the river back in the 1600s, there must have been a crossing point as well. Anyway, we're going to be arriving soon. I have to find the little cutoff to take me down to the river. I'll see you when we're closer. I was here a few months ago doing a quick recce and at that time there was a gravel island in the middle of the river right where the, the fort used to be, that sort of makes sense and I'm hoping it's still there because the plan of action is to set up base camp on this little gravel island I have my rubber boots with me, what could possibly go wrong? Aha! Up ahead! The original plan of action was to bring my metal detector along with me and then I thought, well, this crossing hasn't been used by vehicles for probably 50, 70 years and all this gravel will be relatively new therefore I probably won't find much. Right, we're just about here and it's very boggy. Hmm. The last time I was here the water was a couple of feet deep and it was pretty tricky getting to this gravel area I think this is going to be a success. Right, I've set up base camp number one and already it's looking good with lots of little bits and pieces. I'm not sure if we're going to find full bottles and things but only one way to find out. Right, let's get hunting. That was probably part of a pipe. That's the first piece of metal I've found. In fact, the first thing I've found. There was a mill further upstream, so I'm hoping that some good stuff has been washed down. What a shame there's not more of that. In fact, is there a bit? No, I don't think so. I'm guessing that was part of a toy gun. And that was anyone's guess. I'm hoping to find a maker's mark on one of these, so I could date it. The remains, and I mean the remains, of a mountain bike. That looks as if it's from the rear end of a car, a deluxe. This wall has been put in place at some point to stop erosion and in fact there's one on the opposite side right there. So this is where the crossing used to be. But this looks as if it's been around for about 20-30 years.
a sign of the times. I think this is a battery from a Samsung device. Some interesting little bits and pieces here. The river level is a lot lower compared with what it was before and that's because we haven't had rain for about three weeks. Naturally it rained overnight but I think the ground is so dry it's just absorbed any of the rain. This is just part of a bottle, but it was made by D. Stevenson of Glen Lane Paisley. I just found this and I'm wondering what it was. It was either a handle holder or a very small lamp. What do you think? This gives me an idea of the sort of stuff I would have found if I brought the metal detector. Just very old trash. Such like that. That's the largest piece of earthenware I've found so far. Well here around base camp number one there's a lot of broken ceramic and a lot of earthenware that's been broken. I wonder where it's all coming from. That might have to be another video for a future day. Right, we're going to try and get across the water now to base camp number two over there. Right, base camp number two has now been set up just as the rain begins. The good thing is, because the river level is so low, this uh, riverbed here is actually dry, so hopefully we can find some good things. Island number two is very different from island number one. It's made up of larger stones and small rocks, and doesn't have a lot of um, ceramics or china here. It does have that though which is again the remains of another bike. What is it about throwing bikes into this river? The first piece of earthenware I found on this uh, island is not much at all. This seems to be a prime dumping ground for bikes. I wonder what's been going on here. Maybe people are trying to ride across the ford and finding out it's not a good idea and losing the bikes in the, uh, the torrents. There's absolutely nothing along here. I'm just going to walk down the riverbank a little bit to see what there is. It's funny how this side of the river is absolutely void of finds of any sort. All the action is on that side, but then that's where the mill used to be. There used to be a mill around about, I don't know, half a mile upstream on that side. Today we have a couple of small towns and villages on that side, and I think that's why there's probably so much stuff over the years been thrown in on that side. Here it's just farmland. That's the sort of stuff I would have found if I'd brought the metal detector. I found a stone with the letter H on it, but apart from that, nothing around here. 
I'm just going to go down to these little rapids and then I'm going to head back up to uh, the second island. What do you suppose that was? It's nearest I've come to a full earthenware bottle. Although this is a little hot spot for bits and pieces. The handle of an ancient bucket. I saw this sticking out of this rock and I thought, hmm, okay. Still nothing with a maker's mark on it. A round rubber thing. I'm just going to head down here for five more minutes and then I'm going to head back to uh, island number two. That's a nice colour, isn't it? Right, when I say five minutes, I mean five minutes because I think this is as far as we're going to get. Okay, I've made it back to island number two. Now you probably can't hear this, but there is a strong wind developing and I can smell it in the air, it is going to rain. And I am miles from home, so I'm going to call it quits for today. Anyway, it's given me an idea as to where I should head to try and find... Hopefully you can hear me over that wind here. Uh, it's given me an idea as to where to check for the, the source of all this china and earthenware. It is further upstream, it could be by that mill. So I might go up there and explore it in a week's time. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.